glory to your name, Father God. So you got to understand that praise is a form of, our, of a warfare. Praise is our weapon. You may be going through, you may be dealing with something, but you have to have an anyhow praise. That no matter what you're going through, you know that God is still God. No matter what you're going through, you know that God is still able. No matter what you're going through, you know that God is still sovereign. No matter what you're going through, you know that God is all-powerful. And that there is none like Him in the heavens or the earth. That there is no other name that we can call upon by which men would be saved other than the name of Jesus. So on the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus! What you have to understand is the reason why we're here today is to claim territory. We are claiming territory right now. We are in the seat of the devil's playground, but yet we are here in the midst of it, lifting up the name of the Lord. This is not only for you here, but there are people that are in these buildings that can hear the sound of my voice. There are people that are living in these buildings that may be going through right now, may be depressed, may be in bondage to some form of addiction. They may have some sickness in their bodies and your praise is not only for you, but it may be for them. So if you want to see change in your community, Lift up your voice and give God some glory. Because he is worthy to receive it. we got to learn how to begin to minister unto the Lord. I just came from Holy Convocation. So I was in service for five days this week. And I received a great deal of teachings. Kingdom principles that can be applied here on earth. For the Bible says that, Lord, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. But the only way that God's will can be done here on earth as it is in heaven is if we apply kingdom principles to our earthly lifestyles. We have to remember for the purpose for which we were created. It wasn't to be blessed because we will be blessed. But it was to bring glory to the name of God. That's why we are here today. All the artists that you've seen that have come up here today that have ministered before you. Not only are they ministering unto you, but they are ministering unto God. What we do with our gift is we take it and we give it back to the Lord. The Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service unto God. So we have a service that we have to render unto God. And the Bible says that we have to present our bodies, we have to present our minds, we have to present our souls, we have to present our spirits, we have to present our will, we have to present our intellect, we have to present our emotions, our total beings. Unto God as a sacrifice. Jesus, God in the flesh, laid down his own life as a sacrifice, as a reasonable service unto God, one that was holy and one that was acceptable in the sight of God. And by doing so, he gave us the ability to stand here today, to be in right standing, to be declared righteous before God. Because I am not declared righteous by my own strength. I am not declared righteous by my own power. It is nothing but the blood of Jesus that cleanses me. It is nothing but the blood of Jesus that set me free. It is nothing but the blood of Jesus that has delivered me. It is nothing but the blood of Jesus that has given me forgiveness of my sins. It is nothing but the blood of Jesus and the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that gives me the ability and the strength to stand before you here today. And that's what God desires from his people. He desires the people that we would be made whole, that we would be complete, lacking nothing, but that we would be unbreakable. 
And if brokenness is going to come in your life, allow it to come from the Lord and not from the world. If brokenness is going to come into your life, allow it to come from the word of God and from the Lord. But not from your circumstances. We have to stand upon the word of God. We have to stand upon the promises of God. For the promises of God are yea and amen. So if you want to see change in your community, if you want to see the gangs to be evicted out of your neighborhoods, if you want to see the drug dealers be moved off the street corners, if you want to see your children saved, set free and delivered, you have to speak those things in faith and stand upon the word of God yeah. and know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we can think or even imagine. The Bible says, for his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. For you are not like man that you should lie, nor are you the son of man that you should repent. Have you said it and not done it? Because you see what God has done. He has taken them from the inside of the church, from the four walls, and brought them out into the community. This is the overflow. This is the outpouring of God's spirit that we have called for and that we desire to see and we pray. And God has called you and included you and made you a part of what it is that he is doing in this hour. Consider yourself blessed to be a part of the overflow. Consider yourself blessed to be a part of the abundant grace of God. That you would let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Remember the purpose for which you were created. You were created in the image and the likeness of God to be given dominion, to be given power and authority over the things of the earth. So you have to know that you have dominion, that you have power, and you have authority over the enemy. What happens is sometimes we give the devil too much credit. The Bible declares that he is under our feet. Yes. From the moment that the curse was pronounced in the garden, it said that the seed that would come from the woman would bruise his head and his head shall bruise his heel. Yes. We are the seed of Abraham. We are the children of God. We are the promise. For when we become Christians, we become Christ-like. God takes out that old spirit and he puts the spirit of Christ in us. So therefore, in our Christ-likeness, when we walk in the image of God, and the power and the authority and anointing that has been given to us. We should have the ability to put the devil beneath our feet and take back our community. We should be able to put the devil beneath our feet and take back our youth and keep them in their proper place and in their proper perspective that they would know who they are that they would not suffer from an identity crisis. That they would learn and that they would grow from the word of God. And they would not have to turn to the streets to fulfill what is missing in their lives. Because the word was meant to sustain us. The Bible says that man shall not live off of bread alone, but off of every word. Every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. It shall sustain you. Just as it was so when the children of Israel were in the wilderness for some 40 years. There was a manna. Get this. There was a manna that rained down from heaven. And it sustained them. But the thing about it was is that the manna was only sufficient for the day. And what God was teaching his people was to be utterly and totally dependent upon him. That each day as they awoke, each day as they arise, each day as they set on their course, that they had to be totally dependent upon God to meet all their needs. God is the source of our supply, people. It's good to have a job. It's good to own a business. 
it's good to make money. But let us remember that every good and perfect gift that we receive comes from the Father of Lights. Every good and perfect gift that we receive comes from the Fathers of Lights. But you have to know that every temptation, every suffering, every anguish of your heart also comes from God. Because it's there to test you, it's there to prove you, it's there to correct you, it's there to rebuke you, it's there to build you up, it's there to design uh, something of God in you. Character, integrity, and these are the things that the church the church must be filled with as we go out into the community and we do the will of God. Just last night, the Lord spoke to me and the Lord spoke to me about total and complete surrender. Total and complete surrender. And what happens is so often in our Christian walk, we say, God, I'll take this but I don't want none of that. I'll take the financial blessings, but I don't want the suffering. I'll take the healing in my body, but I don't want to be afflicted. If you've never been afflicted, then how can you be healed? Everything that happens in your life was designed for God to get glory out of man. And what we have to do is, we have to imitate the words of Paul when he says that I have died and I have been buried with Christ to live is Christ but to die is gain so if you want to go to the next level in God how many of you here want to go to the next level in God how many of you here are tired of being stuck in the same place and in the same position and you know that there's got to be more to your Christian walk? When you see the promises that are in the word, you say to yourself, why not me, God? Why can't I have that? If we know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, we know that the problem is not God, but the problem is us. And what we have to do is, we have to submit ourselves before the throne of God and the change has to take place in us before it can go through us. And I'm talking to the church here. I'm talking to the church. I'm not talking to the physical building. Because what happens is, when we talk about the church, we see the physical building. But the church is the people. The Bible says that we are living stones that are being built up living stones of which Christ is the chief cornerstone. Amen? I didn't come to preach, so I'm going to do some music right now. I hope that I spoke to your spirit. No, listen. I pray that the Holy Spirit has spoke to your spirit because it's not about me. I know that when I stand up here that I have to decrease so that way he may increase. So that way the spirit of the living God may be seen and manifest through this earthen clay vessel. Because I'm nothing but dirt. Ah, you got that? I'm nothing but dirt. I was man, I was man formed from the dust of the earth. So if you get a little high-minded and you think a little bit something more of yourself than what you should be, or if you're looking down upon somebody else, you have to remember where you came from. You came from the dust of the earth. You're nothing more but dirt. And that's all we are apart from God. But the only thing that makes us anything is the spirit of the living God that dwells on the inside of us. Oh, y'all need to give God some glory for that. The only thing that makes you anything is the spirit of the living God that lives on the inside of us. 